Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to play a random creak sound effect or any kind of footstep sound effect randomly which is good for a horror game. So I might not be able to verbally explain it very well however I'll show you in a second but a good example of this is in the game Granny where you're walking around sometimes you'll have a wooden floor creak underneath you which the AI can hear and come to you. We're going to be doing that today where we get that random sound effect. So let me hit play to test this out now and I'll show you what this is going to be. So if we walk around like this you see we don't get anything eventually we'll get a sound effect just randomly like that and it's going to be a different random sound effect each time so it will happen at random times and it will have random sound effects so you heard that was different there we've got two there so again it's random and you can increase or decrease the chances of getting this so you either have them more often or less often so like i say this is what we're going to be creating today so let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so the first thing we want to do is we want to import these sound effects so i'll leave a link in the description down below to which ones i'm using and I'm using three different wooden creaks here. So we've got number one, number two, and number three. So these ones I'm going to be using today, you can use whichever ones you like. Just make sure that they are a WAV 16-bit file and obviously copyright free so you're allowed to use them as well. So once we've done that, we're going to open up our animations. So for me that's content, mannequin, animations. And now I'm going to be doing this in a third person run as that's the only animation I want this to play on. But you can do this on your run, walk, jump, any way you like, essentially if this animation is playing, that's when the sound effect can play. So when my character is running, just this animation here, that's when I want it to play. So once you're in here, we're just going to pause it like so, get in a side view, and just find a frame where there's a footstep. So I think about there, the foot's just hit the floor. Once we reach there, we're going to right click on the timeline under notifies, add notify, new notify. I'm just going to call this footstep like so. That's all we need to do in there. So now we can hit this blueprint button in the top right and that will take us to our animation blueprint. In here we're going to find some space in the event graph, right click and we're going to get the footstep notify. So we just search for notify there, you see we have event anim notify footstep or whatever you named it. Out of this we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, plugging that in there. Underneath the event we're going to right click, we're going to get a random integer in range with the minimum as zero maximum I'll put as four. You can put this as whatever you want, this is the chances of it happening. I have five numbers here, I have zero, one, two, three, and four, so that's five numbers, so it has a one in five chance of getting it. So I'm going to come out the return value and get an equal equal, so an equal equal integer, I'll set this number to be anywhere between the minimum and maximum, so I'll set it to be two, plugging the condition into the branch. So if this random integer is two, then it will fire off the sound effect. So again, I have a one in five chance of it happening, so actually I might put this down to 3, so I have a 1 in 4 chance, so a 25% chance that whenever we walk, we're going to get a footstep sound effect. You can increase this or decrease this to be whatever you like. Just change these values here to increase or decrease the chances. Out of the branch, so off the true, if we do want to play it, we're going to get a play sound at location. We're going to move that out and we'll do the location first. So up here we have try get porn owner. We're going to come out of that, or if you don't have that, you can come out of your cast. Essentially, we just want to get the player's location. So we're going to come out of that, and we're going to get actor location. We'll right click the return value and split the structure pin. And then out of the X, we're going to make vector. So it's a vector again, plugging the X in there and the Y in there. What we want to do is we want to come out of the Z, get a float minus a float, plugging that into the Z of the make vector. And I'm going to set this to be 44. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because with the default mannequin, so this character we have here, it's about 44 units to go from the middle to the waist all the way down to the floor. And I want to play the sound effect on the floor as that's where the footstep would be. Obviously if you're using a different character you might need to modify it slightly, but it will probably be roughly the same as this. Or you can just play sound 2D or just play it straight from that actual location. But after this make vector, we're going to go into the location there. And now for the sound, what we're going to do is we're going to get a select node. And you can see we can input different options here. So what I'm going to do is option 0, I'm going to have as my creek, so wooden creek one. Option one, wooden creek two. I'm going to add a pin, option two, wooden creek three. And again, same way we did over here, we're going to come at the index and get a random integer in range, minimum zero, maximum the amount of footsteps you have. So I have two, so we're going to go there. Now you might see that I actually have three sound effects, but I've only got a maximum of two. That's because we count zero as well. So we go zero, one, and two, which is three different values but the numbers go up to two. I hope that makes sense. And that is the code done, it's very, very simple. So what we're gonna do is when we have a run animation, we're gonna go for this footstep notify here, 
which you can see is happening every time there. When we go over that in the animation, it's going to fire off this event. When it fires it off, it's going to get a random integer between 0 and 3. If that equals 2, we're going to play the sound effect. We have a 25% chance that we'll play the sound effect. If we do, we're going to get the actor's location, take 44 off the height so it goes to around foot level, and we're going to choose a random sound effect for the wooden creek, or any sound effect you want. So it's going to get a random sound effect here. So we have a random chance of it happening, and we play a random sound effect. So let's compile, save, minimize, and hit play to test this out. So we can walk around, and, and then you see we've got a footstep there. We should get another one soon, since I've lowered the chances a bit. And we've got one there, and again, and again. So I'm getting them quite a lot, because like I say, it's a 25% chance. So what you do is you just increase this. So how I had it at the start was I had this as 6. So that's 7 values. There's a 1 in 7th chance of us getting it which you saw at the very start when I was showing you, was quite rare. So let's do this again. We got one there, we got one there. So you see, that's a little less likely. So just mess about the values to get them perfect for you. But this is the very basic mechanic that we've made today, which is good for horror games. So we have a random chance of playing a sound effect when the player's walking around. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've created this nice little horror mechanic where we have a random sound effect played at a random time when we're walking around the environment, which again is good for AI perception, like we saw in the game Granny or any other horror game like that. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.